In this video, we want to talk about the concept of an abstract class. So we've seen classes. Oh, our classes have methods and values in them, and those we define them. But what would happen if we didn't define something? So for example, our area and our perimeter here, those implementations were pretty worthless. Okay, I just setting equal to zero is really not a good thing for us to do. Well, apparently if I get rid of them, Scala doesn't like it. I get an error. You'll see that the error message says that the shape, the class shape needs to be abstract since it has two un unimplemented members. Now, technically there are two ways to solve this. One, make the class abstract. Two, implement the methods. You really do need to know which one is the appropriate one in your situation. If you pick the wrong one, you can really mess up your code. Now in this case, the proper one is to make this class abstract. Now what does that mean? That means I can't instantiate it. Okay, that means that it has things inside of it that are not defined. Previously, before I made that abstract, we didn't test this, but I could have said new shape like that. Now I can't, and the error message tells you why. It says that shape is abstract and it cannot be instantiated. And it makes sense. If I could make a shape, I could call area on the shape, but area doesn't have a definition. So abstract classes cannot be instantiated. Now a lot of times students start to ask the question, well then what good are they? They serve as a supertype. They tell us what the subtypes can do. Students often want to say, well, I mean, if I, I could just erase these methods, but that doesn't work either. And here's why. Because a shape is supposed to have an area. The shape is supposed to have a perimeter. Okay, I want to be able to do those things. All shapes should have them. And if I don't put them in the supertype, then I can't use the polymorphism. I can't call those methods, I, at least in general. I would have to say that this was either a rectangle or a circle or whatever. Okay, by putting them in the supertype, even if they're abstract, I make it so that I can call them on instances when I get them. Of course, we know this isn't actually an instance of shape now because we just saw we can't instantiate shape but it can be an instance of rectangle or circle or any other subtype of shape. There's something else that this does as well. And part of the reason why we kind of prefer the abstract version over what we had before. So the problem with saying that these were equal to zero was that I didn't have to put them inside of rectangle. And this is, this is really a horrible implementation. Okay? I, I don't want this to work. And I want to make it so that my rectangle has to override the area. Well, here's the interesting thing to note. If I comment those methods out of rectangle now, remember when we first wrote the rectangle, we didn't put anything inside of it, and Scala was perfectly happy with that. Now, if I don't define both area and perimeter, I get an error. Okay. Here again, it says rectangle needs to be abstract since it has two unimplemented members. And so we have a choice. Well, we could make rep rectangle abstract, or we could write the two members. In this case, whereas in shape, the correct answer was it should be abstract. In the case of rectangle, I don't want rectangle to be abstract. I know how to write these things inside of rectangle. And so the way that I want to fix this is to actually implement these methods. Most of the time, you're going to do this with methods. But it turns out that any of the other declaration types, let's make foo be an int why? I don't know. Okay. You can put them in there and then not give them a, a value. So this foo is an abstract val. And right now rectangle and circle are both unhappy because there's an abstract member that we would have to define if we want those to be what are called concrete classes that we can actually instantiate. So this abstract ability is actually very helpful to us. If we have a class where there are aspects of it that we know should go there, all shapes should have an area, all shapes should have a perimeter. If you have a class where you know there is some functionality that's supposed to be there, but you don't know how to do that functionality, you don't know what would be meaningful. In this case, I don't know how to calculate the area for a shape in general. 
I know how to calculate the area of a rectangle. I know how to calculate the area of a circle. Give me a shape and I can figure out how to calculate its area, but I cannot do it for the general case. That is a prime example of when the method should be left, left abstract. I, I'm just not defining this at all here, and then the class will wind up being abstract as well. These abstract supertypes are actually kind of the most common one. And you might remember back a few videos, we talked about the fact that inheritance provides two things. It gives you the code reuse and it gives you subtyping. When we make a member abstract, there is no code reuse. A rectangle is not getting an area from shape. It didn't need one because it had to define its own anyway. It had its own formula for defining the area. But as we saw, I can't get rid of this area or this perimeter. I'm not inheriting those methods in the sense of I'm not inheriting an implementation of them from the supertype. I'm just getting the fact that they need to be defined from the supertype. This is actually the most common thing that you will see is to have a number of methods that are abstract that have to be overridden inside of the supertypes. And it's those overridden methods that really provide the informative aspects of what that supertype does. If you have a supertype that is completely concrete, a lot of times there's you might be doing things uh, wrong. Most of the time, you're probably going to want the top of your type hierarchy to actually be abstract and to have some of these methods that, or could be member data, you can even have type declarations in some cases. We won't see much of that in here, but it's a possibility. You will want these to be abstract um, so that they can be implemented in the subtypes because that is what differentiates the subtypes.